All right, welcome. This is the fourth day of PulpCon 2023. The last uh, presentation here, or the last section, is going to be open discussion on pulp pain points. And we're hoping to hear from folk in the community about things you'd like to see be different in pulp going forward. Um, this is just going to be an open brainstorming session. I'm going to be taking notes here uh, as we go so that we have a more permanent document of this. And that's what I got. All right, let's kick it off. First, I see a bullet here, which is documentation. Too much, too little, not all in one place. Oh, my. If whoever typed this in wants to ex uh, expand on that one. Brian, go for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wrote this one. And I don't have a whole lot to say on it, I guess. It's kind of, I guess I'm wondering what folks think. Um, but maybe I'll put it to you like this. Uh, here's a claim, change my mind. Uh, our documentation, I think, holds our project back pretty significantly. I don't yeah. think there are people who disagree. I think we are mostly in the pickle because we don't have a straightforward way how to organize it differently. Yeah, that's definitely totally true. That's definitely true for the installer docs. Like, uh, it, it was a pretty good design. And then, oh, we added a new section and another section. And now the, the overall design needs to be replaced, you know? I, I think the docs are good for some things. The getting started with an installation experience is not good. And that, like, if you, I mean, like, we can run an experiment. We can We can go on the website right now and try to install Pulp. And we're mm -hmm. going to start running around in circles. I mean, I don't know, if, Grant, if you want to do that, but. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and I think also as developers, we just have a big blind spot because, yeah, OCIM works great for developing. I'm not sure. Even for new developers, I'm, I mean, I, will, I guess they will ask people and we'll figure it out. But. I'm not sure it works for like somebody. I want to get my pulp installation up and running and start testing things. I mean, yes, it's in containers, so in theory, there's one container I can start somewhere. But then, as soon as I go like, okay, but how do I, I don't know, configure a certificate on it mm -hmm. or something? It gets so. Hard. See, it's it's administration, pulp administration. Um, uh docs is what you're thinking karen karen is that correct at least that's my personal <laughs> yeah i was going to demonstrate what it's like if you were to go do, if you were to do that uh all right do you want to you want to do that mike i'll unshare yep. and you can share your screen yep go for it okay so uh so you're at the home page and you scroll down to start here and then it's, it, it, it talks about the, you know, the different ways of installing and presumably people will find their way to this one, which is what we recommend. And yeah, this page I think is, is pretty good, but it's not, but it's, it's not as good as other projects. Like in other projects, you would have like a button to click, like I, I, I'm using Pyman or I'm using Docker. or I'm using rootless Pyman or I'm using rootful Pyman. And then you would have this instructions viewed based on your configuration whereas with these we just have like sentences saying substitute docker for podman you know and you know and again with and without Linux. so it's and then and then uh and then if you want more documentation well uh yeah uh, you know workflows and use cases is well, that's that's for using it but if you want like the you know, certificates, for example. Yeah, where's our where's our link to the uh, full docs? You know exactly. Yeah, where's the yeah at the top? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> the fact that you're looking yeah. for it is yeah you're making it great. It, it is exactly <laughs> the problem. Exactly right. Right. It's probably at the bottom. Like here's the here's all the other options you can configure. You know. Yep. You know, and then we would link to the section down here, like you know, advanced variables, and it's, you know, 
Well, one of the issues well, is we've been, and well, we don't pulp, have we don't have this properly linked. Yeah. Yep. Pulp. I mean, pulp gives us gives the admin a lot of options for a lot of good reasons, and you don't want to not do that. However, if you say if you're here for the first time, it would be I think again, granting it just incredibly humble opinion here. Um, I think it would be a prescriptive approach of if you're the average admin who wants to have a uh, you know an average smallish pulp instance. Here's the step by step. Without a bunch of options, just this is what we're going to do for you. Click these buttons to go s just follow this set of instructions um, with lots of pointers. If you want to, you know, if you want to change that, there's other things you can do. But here's here's the way to get from I have nothing on my box to I have a running pulp instance with one pulp file repo and one pulp RPM repo and, and a pulp deb or pulp ansible. One repo created for each so you can look at would be outstanding if we had some way to do that. Just to get you up and running in a reasonably your reasonably well configured pulp, um, so people could get a feel for how things work would be cool. I agree. Like, like more integrated instructions, because it's not enough to have a pulp listing. You, you need to actually upload some content. Yeah, and you need to like the the first thing you need to know is like how to change the admin password. Yeah, and and how to set up your pulp CLI to know the admin password and actually talk to things yeah so there's a few that yeah i don't know it's hard writing that doing that well uh, i'd like to sure. share uh, a resource about documentation i've i found recently called geotaxis uh, and i don't know if anybody heard of that it says in the site, a systematic approach to technical documentation authoring. It's cool. just it's just basically a website which uh, proposes uh, certain strategies for structuring the documentation. Uh, it's not like it imposes some some structure. It, it it talks about strategies to organize the content, like like. Uh, the getting started, the tutorials, how to guides, explanations, and reference. And if we are going to do some major restructuring of the documentation, I think it's a good resource to have a look. Uh, Could you share think, a link with us? Yeah, sure. I think some uh, big projects use it. Uh, I'll have to, to look at the website. But I I just like to share that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that would be helpful. Um, I wanted to bring up a particular pain point with the documentation that I have, and that it's uh, not all in one place. <laughs> Each plugin has its own little site, basically, mm -hmm. and that makes it really hard for users to discover things. Uh, yep, I think I agree completely. Um, uh, I feel like this is a product of Conway's Law, of which, um, if you're not familiar with it, is, I'm paraphrasing, um, what you get in terms of what you're building is a reflection of how your organization is structured. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so our organization, a pulp as a software project is structured into a whole bunch of mini teams. And it's not surprising to me that we have a whole bunch of mini sites. Um, and, and we, uh, you know, like we, we went down this road thoughtfully. I think we felt like it was right for a lot of reasons at times. Um, I would be interested in seeing that change because I, I agree. I agree with the problem statement. I'll stop myself there. Yeah, my, I mean, it's not just they, they're in separate places and often have just completely separate look and feels. So it feels like you're going to a completely different piece of software, depending on which particular uh, piece of documentation you have to you end up on uh, after following the links. 
Um, as you say, Brian, there's a whole bunch of reasons, and there are good ones, why we're in that state. But I think now is a good time to take a step back and go, yeah, but we're a much more mature project at this point, and our end users do not care that we have many teams or that there's different maintainers for different plugins. They just want to get pulp up and running, and they want RPM, Deb, and Ansible. And they don't care that those are managed by different, different uh, individuals. Um, and even uh, different companies. It's really not what, what end users care about. So is your suggestion to keep plugin specific terminology and workflows in one place? Given I don't have an, sorry, I don't know. Idea. Given that we have- Well, just on one site, uh, the main thing site. is that you need to be able to use a search box to search all of them at once. They can be broken down like different, completely different sets of docs, but they need to be part of one documentation website that can be searched using one search box. Yeah, what, what I struggle with is having a balance between like having a self-contained docs in plugins, whether or whether putting them in one place. And if we want to self-contain docs in each plugin, we end up repeating a lot of things uh, which we mentioned in pulp core. And then you end up having discrepancies where in pulp core we do the update and then you need to bring in the update in the plugin itself. So that's like overhead. Yeah. yeah. So what I would like is I want to add to that application you read um, version the plugins differently than pulp core and so we publish versions of the docs for different versions of the plugins and i kind of don't see how that would fit into a single page i i guess i would say that um like i agree i like doing that clean like cleanly is is just not possible like you need um you know you would need like versioned docs for each plugin and like if you logically follow that to a conclusion you end up more or less where we already are mm -hmm. um but i guess the pitch that i would make for, for myself it just is like my belief um is i would rather be woefully inadequate in the what specific features are in this specific version and just not be good at that anymore and be really good at having a unified documentation experience. I'm, I'm not sure I have a problem with the federated plugin docs because they are like a self contained topic, right? I want to manage RPM repositories. I can look at the pulp RPM docs and there's workflows for pulp rpm stuff and i can search just within pulp rpm land it's it's all the all the operations and settings and installing pulp and that sends me around in circles that i want in one place but then you also have plugin specific settings but like how to change a setting in this installation method. Like in pulp core, they have it, there's very good like um, documentation on how to change some settings. And then users come along and ask like, but how do I do that within the container? Cause I don't have a config file. It's in the container or like, or it's not in the container. It's in a, so and 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 nobody answers on on like so we don't know nobody knows. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, so so there's that's where I see the need for like unified docs. Like if you if you're running a pub instance and you have the single container, you need to know how to do things with it. And and that's really spread out that information. Some of it's in pulp core, some of it's in the documentation for the single container, some of it's Yeah, in... I mean, like that single container page, I feel like is pretty good, actually. On the website? I mean, it, ish. On the website. But, um, but, yeah, like, but it's outside the docs. <laughs> yeah, 
and the, and the question is, do I do I actually know that as a first time user? So my so mm -hmm. if I go to the website, it goes a little differently. I see that some somewhere I land with like installation methods. Then there's like five installation methods: a single container and and operator and multi container and I don't know. Then I start following links, so I start opening tabs. Then then I find the documentation for the single container and for so now I have like twenty tabs open and I don't know that the page that I want is actually the one that we landed on. Will so, the real documentation please stand up? <laughs> yeah. So so if 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 I want to install, I usually and this happens to me and I know a fair bit about pulp, I, I open up twenty tabs and I get frustrated and I stop. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I think I, I got a little confused in what you were saying, Kieran, but I think I'm hearing that a unified doc site would be better. Well, for, but like for not necessarily for plugins, I'm fine with plugins. I go to the pulp, R, if, I, if I have my pulp instance running and I want to know how to create a pulp file repository, I go to the pulp file documentation. I know how to do that and search around that. I'm fine with that being its own thing. But if I want to install a pulp instance, that's where I always start running around in circles and getting lost. Or if I want to know how to change something about my pulp installation state, like I want to change a setting. And it it doesn't really matter whether it's like a pulp depth setting or a pulp file setting or a pulp core setting. Like I go, I go to the pulp core page where it says about changing settings, but then maybe I get stuck because I don't know how to do it in the container setup. And some people have a container setup, and some people have, and like that's where I usually always get lost. In. I mean, if you go to if you if you go to a Google and type pulp core install, you don't get to pulpproject.org you get to docs.pulpproject.org and you get to the core installation instructions, which are not the, the ones that, you know, that we just saw a screenshot of. Um, they're there, but it's different. So, so what I hear is more like a unified place for operating pulp, like day one and day two. I have deployed it and if I want to tweak some configuration, how do I proceed? Is that about like, user experience with workflows to have them in one place. That's what well, I heard. At least that's my personal thing. So I, I'm I'm not so worried about pulp file and pulp RPM having separate docs. I'm more worried about the like operating pub and installing pulp docs being all over the place. Yeah. So what I hear which is, are the uh, most important thing. Like if we yeah. want more users, um we need it to be super straightforward mm -hmm. to install. Like, and the fact that you can't figure out where to begin is a lot of friction. And Which sorry is. for butting in before other, yeah. <laughs> That's people okay, that know how to use. So, so yeah. what I hear is that the uh, plugin documentation is good for A, workflows, and B, specifics, uh, maybe specific setup steps and specific, um, settings especially and everything else should not be there apart from a link hey if you want to install go there there's the pop core installation docs okay brian yeah i mean i, I think i think that's what i'm hearing also I and mean, i think that's a good characterization of it i really want to try to talk you out of it i want to try to talk everybody into a unified doc site I think if you look at all of our competitors, that's what they offer. And I think that they're doing a great job getting users because of it. But I won't say anything more than that right now. Because um, I, what I want to ask the group is, here's another claim, change my mind. Um, it would be bet the reason why, I believe, the reason why our state of documentation is in this state is because it's kind of in a reoccurring basis, not a priority. Um, I don't mean that negatively. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why it is that way. Um, but I think that's the case. And so 
here's my here's my somewhat controversial maybe controversial claim um if we had a unit of time what is the absolute best way that we could serve our project um now a lot of times in our day job we have to do specific features for specific reasons on specific timelines like those are a given i'm not saying that we need to we can even do anything different than that but there is still like a good amount i would say of like disposable time time where we where we get to make choices about how we spend it and here's my claim it would be better i think in pretty much all cases to prioritize documentation and onboarding instead of additional features pulp is chock full of features and i think it serves the users pretty good at this point and we're getting like really marginal benefits through additional features and maybe we have one doc site maybe we don't i don't know but whatever the idea is we would do better to have like a three month, six month or 12 month period where like, we're just really prioritizing our docs. That's my claim. And change my mind, because I want to hear about other people's opinions that maybe don't agree with that. Oh, I don't know if we could get three months, even three months to do that. But I can, I'm not even going to try and change your mind because I strongly agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's Steven's got his hand up, though. So let's let's yeah. give Steven a chance to talk here. Hello, Mr. Herr. What can we do for you? Hello. Um, so I would love to see more docs improvements. I would just plus one things that people have said already. Um, one thing in particular that I wanted to chime in about is the lack of developer documentation. Like if, if I start on fullproject.org and I try and I say, OK, great. How do I set up a developer workstation so that I can actually contribute a bug fix or something. There is, there's no link to any documentation from Pearl Project or on how to set up a developer documentation. Like you can search and you can find uh, an old news posting that contains a broken embedding, but that's it. Um, if you start on docs.pearlproject.org, then you can actually, from there, if you search, you can find the developer. There's like a page that says basically install uh, OCIM and, and links to the, the OCIM GitHub uh, repository but but i would love to see a little bit more attention uh focused on developer docs on like from the project landing page at least making that findable just to add on to that like some docs about writing tests because it's been a while for me since i wrote tests for pulp and then i see like there's a bunch of different changes so, like having some docs on how to write a test would be good and i've looked at other tests where a lot of them are, like so complicated like i don't know how to like parse out the bits that I need. So that would be great too. On um, PyTest, some of the PyTest fixture stuff, for example, and I do this on a regular basis and I'm still confused, not confused, but I'm, I have to stop and think about it is fixtures are, ma they come from magic places for magic reasons. And if you're not sure how that works, it can be really interesting to try and find the, the work that's already been done. Yeah, because they're not imported, they're just called. Okay. I mean, I, I, that's, and that's, it's not exactly orthogonal to Brian's, Brian's uh, contention or what we've been, we've been talking on here, but there's, there's, I, I see um, kind of three, three hats here. One is the, I think I want to do content management but I'm not quite sure how. So it's the user getting started from zero, standing up a pulp instance, and all they really want to do is get it up and running and have it be not totally insecure and have an idea of how to use it. There's the advanced user, which is I want to do, you know, I have very specific needs for RPM or dev or something, and they need low level detail of, of how to control things. Then there's the developer hat. First of all, and maybe there's two hats there too. There's, I'd really like to, you know, fix this one bug that people have talked about or, or just start figuring out how to do development for Pulp. And then there's the advanced user of, I'm gonna write, you know, a thousand lines of tests for this complicated feature I'd like to add. So it kind of feels like we have two categories, the, the, the initial contact and then the advanced in, in on another axis 
I'm just an administrator. I'm never going to write Python code. And the I want to actually be contributing to pulp. Does that make sense to everybody? I see a few fingers raised, so that's cool. Um, I'm going to throw that down in the notes. Uh, keep going. I also would like to come back to what Brian said earlier, that Pulp is full of features, which I agree with. But I feel like sometimes we don't do the, a very good job of explaining their, not their usage, but their applicability in the real world, like use case scenarios. Like we, for example, do a very good job of talking about the import export workflows but as a user what kind of benefits i get from it or what kind of like the world the word like air gap use case or you know different different kind of usage docs i think this is something yeah. we could do a yep. better job or for example we have the pop continuous ci yeah, image builder which is quite a handy feature but did we have good enough time to actually explain what kind of benefits and in which cases it can bring what I have seen, the words I've used in past years, you know, for exactly that, and I agree with you, it's huge plus one on this, is where we do a really good job of explaining how to do things and we don't explain it all about why you care. It's the why that we're missing. Yeah. <clears throat> what I'm hearing is that we need like how to guides, which, uh, you know, say, no, more like if, why, if why? you want to get this done, you know. Yeah like yeah this thing here's how you do it with pulp we're missing the cookbook and i think dennis you've used that phrase before like so well, we, we we used to have recipes and pulp to documentation yeah we had recipes and these recipes would just describe certain workflows so what i'm hearing is you want a blog post that starts with like eight paragraphs about how wonderful you know the environment we were in the last time we did this and then we have the actual how to do it right Yeah. Sorry, yeah. So, here. But um, before we work on those things, we really should go back to the installation thing. Like seriously, if we mm -hmm. want more people using Pulp, that's got to be very clear from when you get to our website and when you get to docs.pulpproject.org. Doesn't matter which property you land on, it should be very clear as to what you need to do to get started. Like, I think that's, if we're going to prioritize anything, that's the part I would like to prioritize. Yeah, I, I agree. I get yeah, that. and sorry, Mike, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll raise my hand. I mean, I was just going to say, like, I was, I was surprised by the, the relatively small number of pulp users, you know, and like the fact that it's not growing so much over time. And that's just, that's a, it's been on my mind ever since. There's a ease of installation, including docs. Yeah, and um, I, I literally don't think there's a bad pick in the house. Like I've heard developer docs, no, 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 wait, onboarding docs, no, 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 wait, a single single site. Uh, I'm sure we could come up with a bunch more ideas. And those are all great opportunities. Oh, oh including um, the one from Pedro, which has scrolled up in the chat. Mm -hmm. now. I don't know what it's called, Diataxis. Yep. You know, I, um, there's so many opportunities, right? So, but rather than even having one, and there's another pain point, I think, that we need to go talk about. At some point, we need to go to the pulp dev environment. Um, but rather than even picking one, I think it would be better for us to think about just having it as a project goal. Um, because if we can relentlessly pursue a shared goal around making self-service onboarding, self-service usage, and uh, then all these other things will stem and flow from that goal. Um, and I think it literally looks like, you know, some amount of time 
on a quarterly basis. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like, but basically, like it has to be a goal that we work with our respective employers on. And I think what it means is literally like less features. We got to stop. We got to stop spending time on features wherever we can. Um, and I think that's actually the biggest way to bring value back to the commercial entities that do productize pulp and the best way to bring back value back to our user base um, is through improvements through shared testing. Ha! <laughs> and if you saw, um, sorry, that was in response to Matthias's, we need to doc on how to improve our docs. Um, but I, I, I strongly agree, Brian, every, we, all of us, because I, and you know, in all of the meetings often there's somebody's like, God, I wish our, we wish this doc were a little better, but there's always a, but, and it's often, but we don't have the people, we don't have the bandwidth. Um, there's other priorities. The only way to get, to address this issue, because it's one, it's a big, it's big, right? There's a lot to do here. And two, there's no one on the the pulp team that I know of, and Kieran, maybe maybe you can correct me on this. That is currently getting paid, whose primary focus is writing documentation. Everybody on this call is a developer, whether they're in QA or whether they're they're you know a, a line engineer on on pulp itself or on a plugin. Everybody here or is a developer, um, and we don't tend not to think in those terms. Brian, go ahead. Uh, Stephen, go ahead. OK, uh, I was just going to say real fast that, I mean, you laugh, Grant, at the, at the suggestion of having a doc about how to contribute to docs. But I have contributed pulps to, to patches to pulps before, and I have literally no idea how to update the docs that get published on, on pulpproject.org. So like, like, is that in a Git repo somewhere? I have no idea. I couldn't find uh -huh. it if I wanted to. Um, so, oh, there is actually a full project at Git repo. So I'm guessing that that is where that actually lives now that I'm looking for it. But actually having a section about, hey, I found a typo. How do I fix it? Is actually probably useful. That is a great observation. Thank you. Brian. Um, sorry for the background noise. Uh, one, so there's this idea that comes up now and then, and I just want to call it out and then try to share a comment on it there's an idea that um oh like oh this problem will be made better if we had a dedicated full-time community manager or this problem would be made better if we had a dedicated docs writers and um my belief on that other people can have of course their own beliefs but my belief on that is that um we had a dedicated community manager and what they said to us all the time was I have no idea how to write these docs. And they said, oh man, I wish Pulp Developer would fix X or I wish they would fix Y in the docs because they couldn't write them. And so ultimately it came back to the developers and what that docs person said who eventually ended up taking another job was I can't get anyone to do anything. Um, this was like their exit interview feedback. So um, I guess I want to point out that like, once again, it's really up to us um, mm -hmm. because there's no way a third party is going to, even if we had the resources to bring one in, is going to be able to actually fix our problem. Um, and that's great because we can do it. I know we can. Um, we have all the knowledge to do it. And I think if we figure out the priorities, we can do it. Actually, when we had the community manager, it really helped us in the past, I think, because she completely overhauled the pop project website. And I think we can continue doing that as well. And I think we developers do not have much time spending reading documentation and maintaining documentation. So that's why I would suggest that a separate person, dedicated person, would be the best bet. But I'll agree with, with Brian's comment that even if we have an extra person, we have the community manager, for example, and their job is to help us organize and plan. Unless we as developers 
actually commit to making those changes, we're going to be back where we were, which is nothing's going to change, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, there's a few people that can talk, that can write up a documentation, write up docs on an import export or how pulp RPM works or uh, specific low level technical details. You can't have somebody come in whose focus is on documentation and formatting in English and getting it out there for users to also be the, the expert at the technical side. We have to, we have to agree, as Brian says, as a team, that this is a priority for us. And at the end of the day, Documentation written by engineers who aren't particularly fond of writing documentation, is it's kind of suboptimal, you know? It's, it's a talent like anything else, and if you don't exercise it, you're not gonna be great, but that's way better than not having it, honestly. And especially having it scattered all over the place like it is. We just have to commit to this being useful and important and worth our time. Um, and I strongly think it is. I, you know, I agree with everything I've heard here. Um, this is this is a is a thing that holds back the project as a whole. Um, so it's just a question of can we can we commit to doing it? And if we can, can we get the the uh, the bandwidth freed up by making this something that that bubbles up at a top level priority that our stakeholders agree is a thing that team members on Pulp are going to be working on, even though there's some feature that one user somewhere says might be a nice idea. We're not going to do that this quarter because we're working on other stuff. Who's next? Deco. Uh, I think you've like pretty much agree with most of the opinions here, you know. Like, but I, what I would say is, what I would like to say is, I believe like we can say like all of us will have like the same bandwidth or same commitment to work on documentation. You know, and here I believe like enters the developer experience, you know, like the DX point. Uh, maybe you could have like some, I don't know, maybe a task force just, you know, like working just to first organize the documentation, you know, like to like to point our north here, you know, like just to where we should go right now, you know, like with that, I believe like. All other developers of the team, you know, like, could make like specific contributions, so they could like write, like, let's say, like little pieces, uh, just you know, like fixing some typos and things like that, you know, like. But imagine that all of us, all of us, would like would have like the same. It's not commitment, you know, like, but the same uh, strengths or way of working with that, you know, like, I, I don't think uh, we would, uh, you know, like, leave our current place right now, you know? Uh, the second thing, uh, I believe, like, I don't know, but I would love so much, like, to have some web interface, you know? And I believe, like, this is more what? a web interface for Poop, you know? Because right now, Poop is basically, like, baking, you know, like, it's powering some products you know and with that you know like for external users you know like seems like poop is a very occupies a very specific niche here you know like uh almost like a hacker thing you know like so mm. users don't, don't feel invited you know like to try it you know like only if somehow you know like you have a stakeholder and says like okay go on study poop we will need to develop using it you know, like this is the only reason someone will go after. You know, like we need to be, I believe, like at the same place, at the same level of for uh, competitors. Competitors. Thank you so much, Dennis. You know, like and basically all of them have some sort of interface. You know, like they don't have to deal with the common line all the time. You know, and there. Are, I believe like these are you know like the little experience points, you know, like users and developers, you know, like that will reach us, that will put us on the next level, you know, like on this concurrency board here. So I've moved that as a as a as a, a bullet point after the docs discussion, Deco, because what I'm hearing is the first step is 
how do I even stand this up? Let's say we fix that. We address the whole docs thing over the next three months. He says, waving his hands furiously. And now the user says, okay, I stood it up, but I don't know how to talk to it. Oh, you use the CLI. Oh God, isn't there a web UI I can just poke around on? And that's what I'm hearing is the next step. Does that match your, your thought? Totally, man, that's it. Okay, cool beans. I just wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put words in anybody's mouth. Ina. I need to remember, I had a few points. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, the documentation working group is a great idea. However, it's not the first time we have this attempt. There used to be a working group composed out of our community manager, which we no longer have, Brian, Fabricio, myself, maybe I forgot someone else. We, we tried to come up with a plan and strategy. We gave up at some point for multiple reasons. Maybe some of them, the circumstances will change, but we, as we all agreed, documentation never had a high priority because of our other, I don't know, escalations we always got in the way. So we need to somehow prioritize it in the line. I don't think we can not develop features. And we have a list of features in the high priority list. We can't just say like, no, we're gonna focus on the docs and take to tell total our stakeholders. Sorry, docs are our focus. That's utopistic, I think. And I had one more point, which I forgot. I will be silent for now. Okay. Brian? Um, I think we should bring the docs working group back. Uh, from my, what I remember in participating in it is we had we, the docs working group was great at making that plan. We really struggled in getting other people to help execute that plan. And I think where we, what we didn't do, what I would do differently and just looking forward, what I would do differently next time is try to establish a broader, kind of like what we're doing now. I would try to establish this as a broader goal from the start so yeah. that we can actually get that, you know, actually implement the work. Um, the other thing I would say is I'm not pitching that we totally stop feature development. I am pitching that we raise the bar in terms of which features are actually going forward. And I just want to be clear on that um, because uh, not doing feature development is a non-starter strategy. So we couldn't do that. I remember the um, one thing uh, about the web UI. Web UI per se is a great idea, but without any user experience, I would rather not create a web UI. Nothing can be worse than having a web UI which is not usable. And if we don't have people on the team who can help us with this kind of resources and experience or borrow some resources from somewhere, I would rather not go into that rabbit hole without like some knowledge already. Um, I, I want to add something to the docs topic again. <laughs> um, we used the term working group before, usually for things that were like, um, we, we had a certain goal and when that goal is reached, the working group could be disabandoned. And I believe with docs, it's different. There, I mean, there's obviously a first bump of work to get the docs somewhere, but then they need maintenance because it's easy to write more docs, but that would get the docs thing out of shape as fast as possible, as fast as you can imagine. And you need, I believe, a mini team in the pulp terms to keep the docs in shape. And I think uh, talking to Grant in, in somewhere in the last half year, I was like, do you want to add docs for this? Oh, I poked around. I didn't even find a place where to put them. And that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, I hit that with content cards, if I recall correctly. Brian. I think what, um, kind of like what's going on in this doc state discussion and chat, like 
you know, I think that we actually hold ourselves back more than anything. On the one hand, it's kind of like, oh, well, our stakeholders schedule these features and we have to spend our time doing them. But I really don't think that that's what primarily shapes our day-to-day -day work. I think that we as developers like writing code. And so that's what we do. Um, and if we can manage to shift our mindset, I think we will be successful at it. I think Docs Day would be in some way every day. Um, and like on the one hand, we're talking about a big documentation goal and a theme of documentation improvement, and that's great. But what I, even stepping back from that, you know, really it's about project growth and um, serving a larger user base of users. And that's, like I said before, a, a strategy, it's the strategy that makes Pulp a publicly open source funded project even to start with. Mm -hmm. um, because we want to expand the user base so that everyone who makes a downstream from it can have extremely high quality software. And if we in our minds can think, at least I do, although I don't live it, I'm, I'm as guilty as anyone. Um, if we in our minds can recognize that the best way that we can serve our users is by helping to um, make Pulp easier to use and onboard easier to easier, then that would be like an even bigger goal. Um, but we don't we don't think in those terms because we write code. So we're developers, and that's a that's a well, mental we, shift that needs to happen we, we, in order for us to be successful. I mean, we in a way do have that uh, mentality. Um, and what I think of as the CLI. Like the there was a big barrier to entry when there was no CLI, and we've done a great job with that. A great job, and I think um, th that was just you know that what came out of just the mentality is like we got to make this easier, and I think now we have that um, and. The docs really is the next thing that needs to be made easier. Um, but yeah, how do we? I don't remember the last time I wrote docs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, I think that I, I think that's I've reviewed right. some, you know, docs, but that's about it. So, so the thing is, is we're here talking about docs, but I don't think it's about docs. I think it's in many ways about goals. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing that I think we can do is to maybe form outside of this call a time to write down some shared goals um, around documentation. And then you know, how we get there is, an, is a question we can answer on a daily basis. No. Who, how, and when, but where, where are we going as a project? I feel like it's something that having a few written goals would be super great. To the moon. Um, it is noon. Uh, sorry, top of the hour for those of you that aren't in the east coast of the United States. My apologies. Um, and technically, we're done. This is great discussion. There's a bullet that somebody put that we haven't even gotten to here, which is pulp dev environment and how it can be painful to set up and is unwieldy. And do we want to go for another, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes? Are people okay with that? I know Mike had to leave. Or is this a thing we put in the parking lot? And maybe we talk about it tomorrow. What's everybody's schedule look like for the rest of the day? I see a thumb up on, but I don't know what it's for, you know, is that for tomorrow? I, I have lunch. <laughs> okay. Well, and yeah. it is, it is 5 p.m. Uh, yeah. right? It's 5 p.m. in uh, 6, 6 p.m. All right, because we're back on the um, yeah, so can we revisit this a little bit tomorrow about the goal setting? That's great. So there's a parking lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me find the parking lot tab here somewhere. I have too many tabs up. Uh, that's not it. If somebody can find the open, there we go, parking lot. Deco. 
Sorry. Uh, I would ask, like, do we have another goals other than ducks? Because if we don't, maybe tomorrow is just for the skills. It's just for discussing the documentation, you know? If we have something else, maybe we should discuss about goals, you know, but if you don't, I believe like we should just focus on the documentation, on the documentation itself and that's it. Yeah, I meant like what, uh, yeah, setting some goals uh, with regard to the user experience, um, I guess, is what I was saying. <clears throat> I'm awesome. suggesting just to take it from where we finish here. We start tomorrow. Besides the goal setting, there was one more unaddressed topic, undiscussed topic. Okay, okay so it's finish this up. Because mm. if you look at the, uh, the link there is to the parking lot, there's been a number of things uh, at the bottom of the schedule document here. There's been a number of things that, that have been uh, raised as parking lot topics. Um, and we can prior we can maybe meet tomorrow and prioritize and then just start banging them out. How does that sound? Sounds good. All righty. This is great. This is uh, almost as good as, as being in person and having a water cooler networking kind of confer uh, conference presentation. Um, I am going to propose that we call it a day uh, stop the recording, call it a day, and then uh, we will pick up tomorrow morning with uh, some of these open topics. Sound good, everybody? All right, outstanding. Let me stop the recording.